stratigraphic facies, and physical correlations. The term facies is used in a broad sense to describe the appearance and characteristics of a rock unit. Sedimentary facies refers to a body of sediment with a distinctive physical, chemical, and biological attributes. In this lab, we need to have an understanding of marine transgressions and regressions and the facies in which they create. A transgression is the landward migration of the shoreline. Essentially what we're seeing here is the water line is actually rising or flooding a section of one's dry land. A regression would be the oceanward migration of the shoreline. This would be the shoreline moving out or draining out so the land is no longer flooded. Here we have an example of how a transgression on the left and a regression on the right would create different facey situations. On the left we see up here at the top the limestone facies forming out in the deep water. As we come inland we move towards a shallow water where we see a shale facies forming and then moving closer to the land we see a sandstone. If we moved even further inland we might see things like conglomerates. Conglomerates would be unconsolidated material that was deposited by a stream or a river. Well as the shore, as the water table begins to rise and moves up the shoreline we see these facies moving in towards or moving towards the sh original shoreline and thickening. Here we see the limestone becoming slightly thicker but also moving towards the sh original shoreline. We see the shale slightly thickening, thickening and moving towards the shoreline. We're seeing also, besides seeing this thickening of the sediment, if we were to look at the vertical in relation to the lateral, we see a relationship. We see limestone moving across through this section, like so, but also if we move up through the section, we see a re the same relation. We see limestone to shale to sandstone. Here we see the same relationship. We have the limestone, shale to sandstone. So we see a vertical and a lateral facies relationship. Looking at the regression, we see the same thing. We start with deep water. That water begins to recede or move out and we start to see the beach moving further and further out as we come along and so when we look at this we still see that vertical and lateral facies. We see in this case looking through here we see the sandstone to the shale to the limestone. Looking at a cross section of that again we still see the sandstone to the shale to the limestone. In Walther's Law, it holds that the facies seen in a conformable vertical sequence will always replace one another laterally. We see that with the transgressions and regressions. In practice, it is usually difficult to follow a rock unit far enough laterally to demonstrate facies changes. However, a transgression and a regression actually illustrates Walther's Law well. In this lab you may find it useful to go back and look over chapter 5 and some of the information about transgressions and regressions but also to refer back to lab 5 as well for some help or assistance in answering some of the questions to this lab. In this lab, besides answering a few questions about Walther's Law, you're also going to be doing a physical correlation. What we see here are three sections. These three sections represent three different locations. You could say like these were core drillings beneath the surface and pulled up. And what we see at point A would be a sandstone with another sandstone, a shale, a limestone, a sandstone, and then some sort of igneous rock below. 
on the other side, right, this could indicate a section that was maybe a couple of miles away, right, or even more. And in this section we see a sandstone to another sandstone, to a shale, to a sandstone, to some igneous material. What we need to do is between all these points, connect them up and show a physical correlation. Essentially fill in the blanks between the correlations or the sections. We can do this by connecting up the points. Now I want to point out that there are also some letters here, A, C, and B. These are indicating fossil groups, right, or that were found it doesn't mean that you're supposed to actually map up A to A to A. These fossil assemblages or fossil groups are actually indicating the same time period, but fossil groups may not be found in the exact same rock type. So it's not a connection, it just shows you a time. And sometimes we'll have physical correlations that have maybe a lot of limestones or a lot of, li or a lot of sandstones, but they're not from the same time. So besides the lithology of the rock type, we would also use the fossils to match them up. Seeing A up here, we know that this shale up here, because of this A, or excuse me, this sandstone up here, because of the A, does not match this sandstone down here, which has group B. To do the physical correlation, we're going to match up the lithologies. So I'm going to match up this sandstone over here to this sandstone over here. We're going to draw these in. I'm going to match this sandstone over here to this sandstone. I'm going to continue to do this. Now, I'm going to run into a problem here in a moment. When I'm connecting these up, I see that I have this limestone that's running through, but it doesn't make it all the way over to the right side of the page. Well, I'm going to connect it up here, and when this happens, what it's showing me is that this limestone has just pinched out. So I'm going to do that in my drawing as well. I'm just going to draw my line up, I'm going to run it into the line up here to indicate that it pinched out. Now I can come in, connect this one up as well. Okay. Now I've kind of shown this connection, but I still need to fill it in. I need to finish the drawing in between. So I'm going to fill in the lithologic symbols. I'm going to put in for the sandstone my dots. I'm also going to fill in my colors. In the one that you have in this lab, it's already in black and white. You're going to choose the colors for yourself. Take some colored pencils, and once you've drawn these lines in, then go ahead and draw in your lithology, so your dots for your sandstone, your limestone, etc., and then color it in. The coloring will actually help you see patterns that are occurring in the image, as opposed to looking at it in a black and white fashion. So I would fill it in, kind of like this here. Let's take out my my lines here. So we'll come back here and we're going to erase those out. Okay, so mine are erased out. We see these nice solid lines in here. I'm going to fill in the rest. So I'm going to come in there. I'm going to put in my symbols for my limestone, my symbols for my shale, and I'm going to color it in. And now I filled in the blanks in between. So now from the point on the left all the way over to the point on the right, I know what everything looks like beneath the surface in between by doing this physical correlation. In the last section, you're actually asked to look at the Kaibab, or excuse me, at the Grand Canyon and some of its sections. Right? In this image, we see sort of a cross section coming from the top of the Grand Canyon down to the bottom. And you're asked to go through and briefly describe each formation facies or group in figure 8.2 in terms of its thickness, lithology, and weathering profile. So as an example, let's look at the kaibab up at the top. As an example, when you're going through for this section and doing that description, you would write down which section you're looking at. So in this case, I'm looking at kaibab. The kaibab is a limestone. I know this by looking at Appendix A. I know what that symbol, those blocks mean limestone. I can use the scale over to the side in that image 
to identify approximately how thick it is. It's about 180 feet thick. And then also looking at this image, I see that the kaibab is going straight up and down. When I see in a cross section like this, a set of lines that are going straight up and down, that's indicating a cliff. So I'd write in there that it's a forming, it's forming a cliff. I also know that it contains marine fossils and that it's Permian in age. So you're going to go down and do this for the rest of the sections, right? the rest of the formations. So you're going to look at the tapetes, the bright angel, the mauve, the temple, the red wall, the supai group, the hermit, and so on. And you're going to go through and describe each of these. Now, just to get you a little bit started here also, besides the straight up and down being cliff forming, I can also look at these which are at an angle. So if I look here at hermit, I see this is at an angle. And what this indicates is a slope, right? This one's kind of a gentle slope. The Torah weep is a steep angled slope. So in your description, you're going to use that as well. So don't forget, straight up and down like the kaibab, that's forming cliffs. The Torah weep here, we have a steep angle. And at the hermit, we have a shallow angle.